salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ahl al-kitab lima talbisun al-haqq bil-batil wa taktumun al-haqq wa antum ta'lamun. Wa qala طائفتم من أهل الكتاب آمنوا بالذي أنزل على الذين آمنوا وجه النهار أنزل على الذين آمنوا وجه النهار وكفروا آخره يرجعون ولا تؤمنوا إلا لمن تبع دينكم قل إن الهدى هدى الله أن يؤتى أحد مثل ما أوتيتم أو يحاجكم عند ربكم قل إن الفضل بيد الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله واسع عليم يختص برحمته من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم ومن أهل الكتاب من إن تأمنه بقنطار يؤديه إليك ومنهم من إن تأمنه بدينار لا يؤديه إليك إلا ما دمت عليه قائما ذلك بأنهم قالوا ليس علينا في الأميين سبيل ويقولون على الله الكذب وهم يعلمون بلا من أوفى بعهده واتقى فإن الله يحب المتقين إن الذين يشترون بعهد الله وأيمانهم ثمنا قليلا أولئك لا خلاق لهم في الآخرة أولئك لا خلاق لهم في الآخرة ولا يكلمهم الله ولا ينظر إليهم يوم القيامة ولا يزكيهم ولهم عذاب أليم صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على Zakla, thank you for that beautiful recitation. Uh, inshallah, we'll continue the program with uh, Martha by Brother Yusuf Nur Muhammad, followed by a poem by Brother Muhammad Abbas Jafar. Can you please welcome them both with salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Brother Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, salawat. Kehti thi ye ma Khubhar la shes li pat kar Kehti thi ye ma Khubhar la shes 
से लिपट कर को बढ़ा दूँ ठेहरो के मैं अठारवी मन्नत को बढ़ा दूँ फिर ले के बलाए तुझे जीने की दुआ दूँ सद के हो ये लिपट कर है है अली अकबर इतना तो जरा ठेरो तुम्हें दूला बना लूं इतना तो जरा ठेरो तुम्हें बस एक झलक से है रे के सुख राग दिखा दूँ बेचैन थी ख्वाह कर है है अली अकबर अठारह बरस पाल के पर चढ़ाया अठारह बरस पाल के पर चराया ओगे सुओ वाला है मेरा खू में नहाया अब क्या करूं जी कर है है अली अकबर कहती कर है है अली अकबर माँ तेरी जुदाई में भला कैसे जिएगी माँ ते मर जाएगी सुखरा जो खबर तेरी सुनेगी बीमार है ख्वाह है है अली अकबर कहती थी ये कर है है अली अकबर आए जो हमें लूटने खेमे में सीतम घर आए जो हमें लूटने खे सीतम घर माँ देती 
صدائے علی اکبر علی اکبر چھن جائے گی چادر This poem, inshallah, will retell the Messiah of Ali al-Akbar and Ali al Askar as well, two of Imam Hussein's Ali's on the day of Karbala. And it's through the eyes of Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. There's a chorus as well, so please get involved if you, if you can. Ya Habibi, Ya Hussein. Nur Aini Ya Hussein On the day of Ashura Zahra came to Karbala And what did she say? Ya Habibi Ya Hussein Nur Aini Ya Hussein Zahra stands in silence in the land of martyrs. At Fajr, when all is covered by the hand of darkness, she hears a voice that sounds just like her father's. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Surely Allah is greatest. But this is Akbar. Look how similar his face is to my father's. Please stay just for a moment. The women barter. No wonder they cling to his cloak harder and harder. No wonder Hussein shakes as Akbar puts on his armor. Follows behind him his heart beating faster. Oh Akbar, you'd understand my pain if you were a father. But Akbar went with intent. As Zahra watched from the tents, he dealt death to every kuffar that he met. But soon he was spent. And Hussein, seeing the threat of spears to his neck, told Layla, pray for our son, for Allah surely accepts a mother's cry. And just like that, they saw Akbar another time, the women remembering his childhood in the summertime. But now it's time. And Akbar asks his father for a drink, even a little. But Zahra sees her son's tongue is even more brittle. And again, she sees Akbar ride out. But this time she hears Umar ibn Saad give a vile shout, Kill Akbar. Kill Akbar for Hussein will no longer want to be alive now. And Murad Ain lodges a spear into the chest of Akbar that makes Layla cry out, Wa Akbar, Wa Thamarata Fu'ada. And this makes Hussein's eyes cloud. He can't see, he stumbles into the battlefield, scattering the wide crowd. Wa Ya Abata. Alaykum minni salam. Hussein sees his son bleeding out on the sand. Akbar greets his father, reaching out just a hand. Hussein moves the other. He finds in Akbar's chest a spear snapped, pulls it out and says, whilst in his breast is fear trapped. This is my Khaybar. This is my Khaybar, like my father Haydar all those years back. And Zahra says, Ya Habibi, Ya Hussein, Nur Aini, Ya Hussein, on the day of Ashura, Zahra came to Karbala. Ya Habibi, Ya Hussein. Nur Aini Ya Hussein. And then Zahra hears a baby cry. 
which really makes her weep and sigh. And as Rubab sits by Asuka's crib, Zahra sits and clutches her broken rib, for she remembers the child she lost. Hussein shouts, Hal min Nasirin, and behind him, Asuka's cradle, it rocks. He reaches down, collects, and wraps his son in a cloth. Rubab begins to sob. Ya Hussein, Asuka is thirsty, but my milk has stopped. So Hussein walks out, and the battlefield is crossed. First, the Kuffar think he is holding the Quran, but then they're shocked to see him hold his baby aloft. Ya Allah, his neck is so soft. Then Hussein holds him aloft, saying, O oh soldiers, whatever you think I may have done, or whatever, or please have a heart and quench the thirst of my son. Asuka brought tears to their eyes, and a revolution begun, not with a sword, but with the smallest of tongues. And seeing this, Hurmal arose, La'een, and the thickest of arrows was flung, Zahra watched as through the sky it hung, through the sky it swung, until it went to sleep in the neck of the young, and Zahra mourns the arrow and its fatal shot. Hussein tries to walk but is unable, drops, hears the sound as the ladies stop, falls to the ground as an empty cradle rocks, Asuka's empty cradle rocks, and Zahra says, Ya Habibi, Ya Hussein, Noor Aini, Ya Hussein, on the day of Ashura, Zahra came to Karbala, Noor Aini, Ya Hussein. Ya Habibi, Ya Hussain. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ahsan, thank you Yusuf and Muhammad Abbas. Uh, brothers, it, it is a Sunday, it's the weekend, and it's the night of Halloween in Al-Akbar. And we are expecting a large crowd, especially when we, as we get closer to the lecture and after the lecture as well. So if I can just ask you brothers, please try and maximize the number of attendees we can get today. Please move as far forward as possible. With three loud salawats, ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali. Ahsan, thank you. We will continue the program with uh, Ziyarat Ashura. Please welcome with salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. I want us to take our hearts and our minds to Karbala. Tonight in Karbala is the night of Ashura, and he said on a night like this, you could hear the companions of Imam doing dhikr and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa taala, like the buzzing of the bees. So inshallah we can follow in their footsteps, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through this ziyara we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> As-salamu alayka ya aba abdillah As-salamu alayka ya ibn rasulillah As-salamu alayka ya khirat Allah wa ibn khirati As-salamu alayka ya ibn amir al-mu'minin wa ibn sayyid al-wasin السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين 
السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد عظمت الرزية وجلت وعظمت المصيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وعظمت مصيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعن الله أمة أسست أساس الظلم والجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة أن دفعتكم عن مقامكم وأزالتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة أن قتلتكم ولعن الله الممهدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشياعهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله آل زياد وآل مروان ولعن الله بني أمية قاطبة ولعن الله بن مرجانة ولعن الله عمر بن سعد ولعن الله شمرا ولعن الله أمة أسرجت وألجمت وتنقبت لقتالك بأبي أنت وأمي لقد عظم مصابي بك فأسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني بك أن يرزقني طلب ثأرك مع إمام منصور من أهل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراءة ممن قاتلك ونصب لك الحرب وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس الظلم والجور عليكم وأبرأ إلى الله وإلى رسوله 
ممن أسس أساس ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانا وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشياعكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وأتقرب إلى الله ثم إليكم بموالاتكم وموالات وليكم وبالبراءة من أعدائكم والناصبين لكم الحرب وبالبراءة من أشياعهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم وولي لمن والى وعدو لمن عاداكم فأسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب ثأري مع إمام هدى ظاهر ناطق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبتي مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقامي هذا ممن تناله منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محيا محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وآل محمد اللهم إن هذا يوم تبركت به بنو أمية وابن آكلة الأكباد اللعين ابن اللعين على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم العن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد بن معاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبد الآبدين وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فضاعف عليهم اللعن منك والعذاب الأليم 
اللهم إني يتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقفي هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيك وآل نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم العن أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابع له على ذلك اللهم العن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعات وبايعات وتابعت على قتله اللهم العنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن ال وعلى أولاد ال وعلى أصحاب الحسين صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Hassan, thank you, Imranli. Brothers, just before we have the main lecture for tonight, again, another request from the volunteers on the side at the back. If we can please just try and shuffle as far forward as possible so that we can get an, as many brothers, and I'm sure it's the same on the sister side and the ladies, so please try and move as far forward as possible. With the salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Brothers, one more salawat. Please try and move as far forward as possible. Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salla ala Muhammad. Inshallah, the topic for the lecture tonight is the power of a relationship and the social media case study. Can, you can we please welcome Sheikh Salim Yusufi with the salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين والسيد المرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعن الله الدائم على عدائهم أجمعين من يومنا هذا إلى قيام يوم الدين السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين 
وعلى أصحاب الحسين. Respected elders, brothers and sisters, on this occasion of the ninth evening of the month of Muharram, I begin by expressing my condolences to our living Imam, Ajadallahu Farajuh Sharif, may Allah hasten his reappearance. On this occasion and to all of you as well, may Allah reward you for your commemoration. Tonight is the night of what is known as Atasua, and tomorrow is the day of Atasua. Atasua means the ninth. And this night and day are particularly mentioned in the traditions and narrations of the Ahlul Bayt. They have great significance. According to a hadith narrated from our sixth Imam, Imam Sadiq. It was on the 9th of Muharram that the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad became happy because they knew that victory was going to be theirs. The reason was that they had received reinforcements from Sham. The army had arrived. And Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad and Umar ibn Sa'ad were happy at this time. And it's very interesting that when our sixth Imam السلام, is remembering these events, he cries out, he, say, he says, Be a bee, may I be sacrificed, may my father be sacrificed because of the oppression of Imam Hussein and because of his ghurba, because of his being exiled at this time. So when the Imam السلام, is thinking about these events, he's pained, he feels something in his heart. And one of the things I want to say to all of us today that our Imams, the Ahlul Bayt السلام, they have a lot of care and concern for their followers. In hadith we're told, num number of hadith, they say that when, for example, if one of you, meaning one of the followers of the Imam, if one of you is happy, the Imam is happy on account of your happiness. And if you are sad, then the Imam is sad on account of your sadness. If you fall sick, then the Imam also feels that sickness because of his connection with you. And the reason for this is because Allah in his mercy and his generosity and in his perfect ability to create this earth in a way which represents his divine wisdom, he doesn't leave us alone. It's not like he put us here and said that, okay, you're on your own, figure out things yourself. He gave us leaders. He gave us those who take care of us. Our Imam السلام, is feeling our pain and he's happy when we're happy and sad when we're sad. But knowing that he's the leader, now it's our turn to show that we're his followers. Because we know that our Imam, just like Imam Sadiq before him, is feeling pained at this time. For him, these realities are not just because it was his family members, but because this is about him and what he stands for and the way that people treat the Imams. And so this is the time for us to really be showing our emotion. When you come to these gatherings, I want to re-emphasize that we're coming with our bodies, we're coming with our minds, we're also coming with our hearts as well. Nobody should be ashamed of shedding a, tire, a t shedding a tear or crying out loud or casting their head down and their body shaking. Nobody should be shy of making themselves be a mourner at this type of occasion. And in fact, if some of you are able to spark the mourning for other people, that's so appreciated. All we need is one person to cry out loud and that might be the reason for other people for their hearts to break as well. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Now tonight is the night of the remembrance of Hadrat Ali Akbar alayhi salam. And on that occasion, I felt that it would be very appropriate for our topic about parenting and connecting and relationships and inshallah social media if we get to it. 
I thought it would be appropriate to first begin by quoting an incident from his life that all of you have heard of. It was on the journey to Karbala where Imam Hussein salam is riding his horse along with his family and his companions. And for a moment, he sees a vision in which he hears a cry. And the cry says to him that you are people who are speeding ahead, but death is coming and chasing you. And you are making your way towards Jannah. You're making your way towards paradise. And when the Imam salam wakes up, he knows that this is an indication that it is only a matter of time before he will be leaving this world. So he cries out, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Now Ali Akbar salam was the son of the Imam and he, he was always close to his father. And when he hears his father cry, this cry, he comes to him and he says, My father, what is wrong? And the Imam alayhi salam asks him, uh, he narrates to him, you know, the, the dream or the, the vision that he had. And then Ali Akbar alayhi salam has a question for his father. He says that, Afalasna um, ala al-haq, are we not on the path of the truth? And the Imam alayhi salam says that, yes, indeed, by the one who, to whom all of us will return. And then Ali Akbar salam says that famous line, إِذَنْ لَا نُبَالِي بِالْمَوْتِ If that's the case, then it is not a concern for us that we should have to die. Now at this point, Imam Hussein salam says something which is very interesting. He doesn't just leave it at that. He doesn't just say that, okay, I agree and mashallah, what does he say? He says, may Allah reward you the best reward that a son can get on account of his relationship with his father. What does that show us, brothers and sisters? It shows us that Ali Akbar salam didn't just become Ali Akbar just like that. Ali Akbar salam has a history of a relationship with his father. And at this time, after spending all these years, he has reached the prime of his youth. He's being tested in a way that perhaps no other youth has been tested before. And Imam Hussein salam is seeing the fruits of this labor. He's seeing the perfect manifestation of what he wants in a son. And then he says that may Allah reward you the best reward that a son can get on account of his relationship with his father. It's this relationship that, inshallah, I want to talk about today. Now remember that we have other examples of relationships. Yesterday, yesterday we talked about Abdullah, the son of Zubair, and how he was able to control his father, how he was able to manipulate him. Abdullah was somebody who apparently, he grew up in a broken home, his father apparently did not take the right strategy when it comes to parenting. And Abdullah's actions were so instrumental in turning history towards darkness and oppression of the Ahl Bayt. There was one time where the mother of the believers, you know, the wife of the Prophet, that she, on the way to the battle of Jamal, she asks, she hears, she hears the sound of the barking dogs. It's a very interesting thing. She hears the sound of barking dogs. And she asks, that, what is this place right here? And they tell her that it is the place of the, wa the water of Hawab. And when she hears this, she cries out, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And she says, Rudduni, Rudduni, send me back, send me back. I'm not going forward. So they ask her why. She says that when I heard the dogs barking, it reminded me of an incident that happened many years ago. When the beloved prophet, when he had all of us gathered and he told us, that, and he told the, his wives, he said that beware of that incident. When the dogs will be barking at the place of water of Hawab. And then he turned to me, Specifically, he told me that you don't be the one who is in that situation. And I realized that at that time, he was predicting what's going to happen right now. 
So it was going to be over. The first civil war in history was going to be stopped at that point. But who is it that becomes that reason for why this civil war continues? It's Abdullah ibn Zubair. And he comes up and he says, what's the matter? She says, what happened? He says, who told you this is the place of the watering of Ho'ab? She said, that person. He says, okay. He brings 50 people and he has them testify that the place we're in is not Ma'ul Ha'ab, it's some other place. And after that, she's convinced. And they say, you know, Muslim historians from all schools of thought, they say that the first time in Islamic history that somebody actually took an oath on a lie in this manner was Abdullah ibn Zubair. He turned history against the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as So, how do we form this relationship with our children? What is the Islamic basis? What are the Islamic guidelines for this? One of our great scholars, Ayatollah Jawadi Amali, may Allah protect him, he has a beautiful analogy. He says that a family is not made up of individuals who just happen to be in the same location at the same time. He says that, for example, if you want to build a building, because after all, we said, you know, we said yesterday, we quoted the hadith that says that marriage, family is a building. He says if you want to build a building out of bricks, you don't just get bricks and stack them up, and there you go, you have your home or your building. You can get the best bricks, the highest quality. You know, you can import them from, I don't know, Turkey and get all these nice colors and everything like that. But that itself is not going to build your building. That is the weakest of buildings. Because bricks alone do not make up a building. If you want to have bricks, you have to have something else which is called mortar. Which is that substance which binds the bricks together. Without that mortar, these bricks will just fall apart. What is that mortar? That mortar is the connection that makes us not just be individuals, but rather makes us be a single unit. It's that connection of compassion and love. Now, brothers and sisters, in the modern world, unfortunately, there's many aspects of it which try to rip apart these, these stitchings and, and rip, rip us apart and make us into individuals. I want to give you some examples today, some practical examples, just to show some of the aspects of modernity and how we need to be careful when we're dealing with them. So where am I going to start? I'm going to start with the birth of a child. Such an important occasion, such a monumental occasion in the life of parents. What happens when a child is born? We know that the child is connected to the mother with an umbilical cord. And that umbilical cord is very significant. This is the source of risk for that child when the child is in the womb. And we know that when the child is born, that cord is clamped so that the child can now be separated from the mother. And those of you who have had experience in this, you can ask yourselves that when is the cord clamped? It's interesting that historically the cord was not clamped right away. The child came out, it was connected to the mother. They didn't rush into clamping the cord and yanking the child away from the mother. But they gave the child some time, minute, two minutes, a few minutes, right? And then they clamped the cord. It was only in the 1960s when they started to clamp the cord earlier. And it's interesting that in just recently, like in, you know, just if you look at the later medical advice in recent times, they're saying that actually we're making a mistake. Why are we rushing into this separating the child from the mother? And if you go back into the traditions of the Ahlul Bayt, we have a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Where he says that when your child is born, you should recite the adhan in the right ear and you should recite the iqama in the left ear. And then you should clamp the cord, not before. Maybe the Imam Islam is teaching us that look at, don't be in such a rush to separate your baby from the mother. 
Now, you might say that, okay, well, that's something which is one thing, but let's go on. Okay, the child is born. Now, when it comes to the issue of the child being nursed by the mother or not, okay, you know that this issue is a touchy issue, and I don't mean to like highlight anybody in particular. Right? May Allah reward all those mothers who do so much for their children. And maybe for some mothers, right, they have very good reasons for why they do what they do, and they know best. But at the same time, it's important for us to look at it from the paradigm of what is the society pushing us towards. We know that that model of the mother who is supposed to get back to work as soon as possible, to be on the go, to be the career person, even though she has a young child and maybe even though she's nursing, it yields a type of mismatch. We're here on one hand, the child needs to be nursed, and the other hand, the mother can't be there to nurse. So what happens sometimes is that instead of the mother nursing, after a certain amount of time, maybe a few months, maybe a few weeks, maybe a year, the child is now given a bottle and said, here you go. Now, brothers and sisters, think about it. In the womb, the child is hearing this sound constantly. There's never silence in the womb when the child is in the womb. There's always this sound. And the sound is the beating of the heart of his mother or her mother. Imagine that's the only thing you're hearing and now suddenly after nine months of hearing or let's say when the soul enters the body, let's say five months of hearing the same sound, day and night, 24 hours, now you're separated from that sound. For all that time, the baby is curled up in a certain position, very tight, very like closed like this, and now it's taken away from that. That's something which is a shock to the system. And here Allah created this natural way for the child to be able to at least hear the same sound again, at least be in the same position again, at least feel that same comfort and be reminded of that origin of where it came from. It's such a beautiful construct. And in our hadith, we're told that this is highly recommended. The Quran speaks about it. It says that fi amin, that it's, to, it's for two years. Yeah, it's not wajib. But it's so highly recommended that they say that if for some reason the mother can't do it, then find somebody else to be able to nurse. But what does sometimes this modern society tell us to do? It says that go give the child a bottle. And now what happens? That child who is going to be connected to the mother for two years, multiple times a day, now the child says that, well, I can walk away from my mother. And you see that perhaps there's a message being given here, that you be your own person. Go and be an individual. It's okay, you can separate from me. When a baby cries, sometimes the parenting advice is given that you need to teach your child to self-soothe. Let them figure out how to deal with their crying on their own. Let them cry it out. Now again, I don't mean to point fingers here or to say that if somebody did this approach that they're bad or they're wrong. All I'm doing is saying that let's look at it from a paradigm perspective. When a child is young, sometimes the parents will go and use the cry it out method. They take that baby and they put it in the cradle and they go away and they say you figure out on your own. And the child will cry and cry and cry until they get so tired they don't have any energy to go on anymore. And out of pure exhaustion, they will fall asleep. What is the paradigm that's being conveyed here, brothers and sisters? It's a paradigm that when you have problems, when you have legitimate needs, the one you have to turn to is yourself. At that time of need, your parents are not there for you. Is this a correct paradigm? I want to quote to you a very, very interesting hadith from the Ahlul Bayt. I know some of you can help me with the salawat on Muhammad. Wa Muhammad.
We have a hadith from our Prophet where he says that when you promise something to your children, fulfill your promise. Why? Okay. This is very important. Paradigm. What is the par Islamic paradigm? For they perceive you as being the source of their rizq. Meaning what? Meaning that the Prophet knows better than us that Allah is the source of rizq, right? Allah is, inna Allahu huwa razaqul mateen. Allah is the one who is the razik and the razaq. He's the one who gives us provision. But what does he say? He says that when your child is young, that your child sees you as being the razaq. Meaning that you are a representative and an agent of your Lord when it comes to your child. Meaning what? Meaning that when your child is in need, you're supposed to be teaching that child that when you're in need, your Lord is always there for you. أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Allah says in the Quran that you call upon me, I'm there to answer you. When somebody asks me about, ask you about me, then tell them, إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am near. When is a child, how does a child learn this? They learn this through the actions of their parents. When they're there for their child at times of need. They're emotionally there for them. But sometimes, again, these paradigms, they push us away from being connected to the people who actually need us and we need them. I'll give you another example. From a very young age, there's been a complete paradigm shift in our society when before the children were played with by their parents. Child is a child. They want to play, they want to have fun, they want to run around and do other things, right? And the happiest moments that they have is when they're playing. But what's happening in recent years, the parents sometimes are too busy with their own lives or they're too occupied with something else or they just can't bother to get down and to be like that child and play with them. So what do they do? They say that I have found the solution for all my problems and now my parenting is going to be a breeze. What am I going to do? I'm going to give that child a device. What is the message that we're sending to our children? That I'm not there for you when you need me to be there. In your times of sadness and distress or your times of joy, you're on your own. You figured out yourself. Now, you know, sometimes even we ignore medical advice. What are the, the medical industry tells us that you should never give a screen to a child who is less than two years old. It can mess up with their brain, right? But sometimes you see that, oh no, this is good because when they watch like this video of whatever, sometimes it's even like a nasheed video. It's like, okay, it's Islamic. Let them watch the nasheed video. They're going to calm down. What's going to happen to them, right? We don't even know the effects of some of these things long term, how it messes up with their brain. Let me give you another example. That sometimes in modern society, parents who are really keen on their children succeeding and making it big, what do they do? Right? When their child gets, as soon as they get old enough, they say that, okay, you have to go to school, but as much as possible, I am going to occupy your time with different activities, clubs, extracurricular, tutoring, this thing, that thing. Why? Because... I need you to be somebody who's successful. And I don't know how it is here, but I'm speaking from you know, back home where sometimes parents can be super, super, like, you know, just extremely obsessed with having their children become academically like just super, super men and super women. They end up spending only a handful of minutes with their children. And most of those minutes are when they are shuttling them around from one, one place to another place. And the question is that what is modern society doing to us? It's telling us that instead of building those bonds, spending quality time together, developing emotionally stable children, instead, as soon as you can, you, as soon as you, can you outsource everything to everyone else. Ignoring the fact that it's in the home that you develop a true human being. Right? This is something which is of great concern. But sister, I want to share with you this one 
hadith that we have from Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This hadith is like one of those hadith, you know, my, my teachers would sometimes say this. They say that sometimes you come across ayat of the Quran or hadith from the Ahl al-Bayt salam that they're so incredible. Everything's a light, everything's brilliant, everything's beautiful. But these are so beautiful and brilliant that if you could, you should take gold and write it in gold. So when it comes to families in particular, this hadith is something which I feel is so critical and essential. What does Imam Ali said? He says, Man hasuna khulquhu kathura muhibbuhu wa anisatin nufusu bihi. Okay, the wisdom in this tradition, I'm telling you, I just like subhanAllah. But when I think about it and I think about all the cases that we see in our school, you know, in, in, in the children of our community back home, in the school back home, when I see the youth, when I see families coming and saying we're having problems, I'm like, just let's go talk about this hadith. Let's learn about it. What does the Imam say? He says that whoever has good akhlaq, okay, what does that mean? It means that whoever demonstrates love, compassion, care, respect, respecting the dignity of that person that they're dealing with, kathura muhibhu, meaning that those who love him are going to increase, number one, number two, and that the souls will find comfort, comfort with that person. What is the Imam Ali Sam telling us? He's saying that there's something really crucial here, brothers and sisters. He's saying that if you want to have a successful family, that family has to be one in which the souls are connected with one another. That connection doesn't come about by just being in one place or showering them with wealth or you know, putting, making them academically successful or you know, su uh, success in terms of career oriented. It comes about by spending quality time together. It comes about by building that relationship. It comes about by going against this trend towards individualism in the society. So practically speaking, how can we put this together? I have advice that I like to give, humble advice. One advice for my fathers, one advice for the mothers, and one advice for the children. Inshallah, that covers everyone in the audience. Inshallah, you can help me with the salawat on Muhammad. So to fathers, right? may Allah reward you for everything you do. right? By coming here, by bringing your children, right? mashallah, may Allah reward you. But there's one thing that I tend to see that I just want to share, that sometimes our fathers are, yes, maybe they're stepping into the role of being a leader, inshallah, which they should be. But sometimes they forget about the importance of being a compassionate leader. Sometimes, you know, the children come up and they complain. They say that our father has complete inability to express emotions with us. He's there to tell us what to do. He's there to set the expectations and to put the rules and to lay the line down and say, you can't cross this. But we can't relate to him on an emotional level. And we have a need of doing so, but we don't know where to go. This is very important. I understand that sometimes it's hard, right? Because we weren't raised that way. But at this time, in this society, when we're seeing what's happened to, happening to our youth, the challenges that they're facing, it's so essential. You know, they say that if you want to really meet the emotional needs of your child on a physical level, if you have a child, you should at least hug them four times a day. At least four times. And if you want to do a bit better job and be a little bit more sure that you're meeting the emotional needs, you should hug them at least eight times a day. And if you really want to be sure that your emotional needs of your child are being met, at least at a physical level, you should hug them 12 times a day. And some, for some of us, right, we're like, we struggle to even do it once a day. Sometimes days go by without us having physical contact with our children. And sometimes it's because of taboos and cultural things that, oh, when my child gets to be a certain age, now I have to treat him like a man. And now that he's a man, right, no more hugs anymore, it's going to be handshakes from now on, or fist bumps. Right? Not realizing that, no, this might, this, this son of mine, for example, who might be taller than I am, just because he's tall, he still has needs and still has emotional needs as well. He still needs those hugs as well. 
As a father, one of the very important things is that if I have a daughter, is that she should know that she is loved and admired by me. Even in hadith, we're told this, brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes we're such we're so hungry for what's modern and what's new, and we're so willing to just you know, put an X on everything that's of the past and say that we need to revise and go through modern and, and we, forgetting that there's so much ignorance in the modern era. What does Imam Rida alayhi say? He says that for a man, if he has a, a, a female family member who is a mahram and he does good to her, then Allah will do good to him on the Day of Judgment. What does that mean practically? Is that we need to be praising our daughters. We need to be telling them that you are so beautiful, you're precious, you're my princess. Why? Because if we don't do that, then we're going to see the problems when they get the teenage years. When they're like, I need to be loved and admired and appreciated, I'm not getting it at home, so I have to go elsewhere for that. And sometimes they're screaming for attention and nobody's there to give it to them. Just like that child who was crying when they were young. For the mothers, my humble advice to you is that please don't think that being a mother is something which is inferior or something which is not praiseworthy. Your being a mother is something which is such a high rank that we can't even understand. The compassion that you have, the patience that you have, the way that you can take, take things in and absorb them, the way you can be the peacemaker, these are things which naturally you're endowed with. Don't give them up because of this type of modern paradigm which tells you that if you want to be successful, you have to be a career woman. Now, I'm not saying you can't be a career woman, but make sure that your priorities are straight. And finally, for my dear children, please do not cut the branch that you're sitting on. We're in a world right now which is an individual, individualistic world where people for the most part are on their own and they have to fend for their own and, and face life difficulties, life's difficulties all on their own. Sometimes even within their home and their marriage, they don't have the support that they need. If you have parents who are trying to connect to you, if they're trying to come and make contact with you and discuss with you and talk to you, if they're interested in your life, which they should be, if they want to take you out, which they should, please do not be somebody who says that, I'm okay. I'm fine with my phone and my friends and my social media. Because all those will not be there for you when you really need them to. And your parents will bend their backs backward. They'll sacrifice their own life to make sure that you're happy. This is what the type of values that we learn from Karbala, that if it comes to family, we will never abandon each other even when the times are dire. We're all going to be together. We don't have a single example of one of the family members saying that, Dad, Mom, I'm okay. I'm going to do things on my own here. No, they're in it together. And that comes about by wanting to have that connection. This is my humble comments. Inshallah, I wanted to talk about social media, but that will have to, inshallah, um, be for tomorrow. You can help me with the salawat on Muhammad. Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, tonight we are commemorating the very difficult musibah of Ali Akbar, Hadrat Ali Akbar alayhi salam. In hadith, we're told that when Allah loves somebody, He tries them. And if He really loves them, then He tries them by taking away from them all their wealth. But not just all their wealth, He takes away from them a child. And it is, it is a sad tragedy when we hear of any parent who has to face the loss of a child. But when it comes to the likes of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Hadrat Ali Akbar and having to lose him, this is something which is indeed a great tragedy. Who is Ali Akbar alayhi salam? He is the one among all the members in the camp of Hussein alayhi salam who they say was the most resembling of the most perfect of human beings in his speech, in his outward appearance, and in his character and characteristics. This is the one whose martyrdom we are commemorating on this evening. 
صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك صلى الله عليك يا سيد الشهداء يا سفينة النجاة Peace and blessings be upon you, O our beloved Hussein, O Master, O Chief of Martyrs. Peace be upon you as your body laid on the sands of Karbala, next to the banks of the Euphrates River, while your mouth was thirsty. Peace be upon you and upon your blessed companions. Ya laytana kunna ma'akum fanafuza ma'akum fawzan azima. If only we could be with you and we could have attained that great victory with you. Peace be upon Ali ibn al-Hussein al-Akbar. After the companions had given their sacrifice on the day of Ashura, we see that right away the first one to advance to the battlefield is the Imam's own son, Ali Akbar. Perhaps he wants to set the example for others. إِذَنْ لَا نُبَالِي بِالْمَوْتِ In this situation, death is an honor. He seeks permission for Imam Hussein alayhi salam to go to the battlefield. They say that on one hand, Imam Hussein alayhi salam gives him permission right away. But as Ali Akbar alayhi salam is advancing to the enemy, Imam Hussein alayhi salam cries out. He says, Oh Allah, bear witness that I am sending towards them the one amongst us who most resembled Rasulullah in the way he spoke, in his appearance and his characteristics. O oh Allah, the same way they are cutting off my progeny, do the same with Umar ibn Sa'ad. Imam Hussein alayhi salam is watching as his own son goes to the enemy. He cries out, Ana Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali. I am Ali, the son of Hussein, the son of Ali. نَحْنُ وَبَيْتَ اللَّهِ نَحْنُ وَبَيْتِ اللَّهِ أَوْلَى بِالنَّبِيِّ Of all the people, we are those who are most closest and most deserving to be close to the Prophet. أَمَا تَرَوْنَا كَيْفَ أَحْمِي عَنْ أَبِيِّ Don't you see how I am protecting my father? With that, Ali Akbar alayhi salam, he launches his attack. Alama Majlisi in Bihar al-Anwar spends a whole paragraph describing how the son of Hussein and the son of Ali kept on attacking the enemy and he kept on turning them away. No one could stop him. No one could stand in his way. But after Ali Akbar alayhi salam fights for some time, we see one of the most amazing scenes from the day of Ashura. We see the son coming back to his father. We see the follower coming back to his imam. What is he doing? He wants to bid the finer fe- final farewell to his father. How blessed and how amazing this relationship is between the father and the father and the son. He comes to his father. What does he say? He says, Ya Abati Al Atashuqan Qatalani. Oh my dear father, the thirst is killing me. The, ar- 
armor, the armor is weighing down upon me. If only there was some way to get some water. He knows whom he can turn to for solace in times of difficulty. His father knows how he can console him. What does he tell him? Oh, Ali Akbar, be patient for some time. These are the challenges that this dunya brings us. Oh, Ali Akbar, soon it will be the case that your thirst will be quenched by none other than your grandfather, Rasulullah. Ali Akbar alayhi salam faces the enemy for the second time. He charges them. There's one amongst them, Munqid, who is dead set on putting an end to the life of Ali Akbar. He launches his spear. We see that Ali Akbar alayhi salam, when he receives the impact, he knows that this is the final moment. What is he thinking about at this time? Ya Abati, alayka min salam. Oh my father, yes indeed, my grandfather is now ready to give me that water that will quench my thirst. But the enemy knows who this is. They know that it is the son of Hussein. When he falls to the ground, they raise their swords. What do they do? irban irba. Jointly, they do their act of barbarism. Imam Hussein alayhi salam rushes to the side of his son. I can't imagine what he has seen at that moment. What does he do? He bends down. This is his precious son. He takes his blessed cheek and he puts it on the cheek of his son. Ya Ali ala dunya afa. This world is worthless of living in after the likes of you has been killed. But one thing we should mention, that throughout this whole time, there is one lady who is watching what is happening. Who is this lady? She comes out, she is crying. What is she crying out? Zainab is saying, Wa Habiba. Oh my dear Ali, Wa Bna O oh my nephew, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Hatim Hussein. सीने में है नेजा 
घोड़े से गिर रहा हूँ बाबा संभालना बाबा ये जख्म आप से देखा न जाएगा ने जा निकालते हुए मुँह अपना फेरना है दर्द गजब का दम होठो पे आया घोड़े से गिर रहा हूँ बाबा संभालना अकबर ने दी सदा सीने में है ने जा घोड़े से गिर रहा हूँ बाबा संभालना हाय खबर खयाम में देना न बाबा जा मर जाएगी फूफी मेरी मर जाएगी वो माँ है वक्त कजा का आ जाओ खुदारा घोड़े से गिर रहा हूँ बाबा संभालना अकबर ने दी सदा सीने में है ने जा घोड़े से गिर रहा हूँ बाबा लेना क्या सख्त इम्तिहान है मालूम है मुझे तन्हा पिसर के लाश को कैसे उठाएंगे दे आप को खुदा ये सब्र हौसला घोड़े से गिर रहा हूँ बाबा संभालना अकबर ने दी सदा सीने में है ने जा घोड़े से गिर रहा हूँ बाबा संभालना जख्मी है कले जा है वक्त मदद का घोड़े से गिर रहा हूँ बाबा संभालना अकबर या हुसैन Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, brothers, please form your lines. Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain. La Beka Ya Hussain, La Beka Ya Hussain, La Beka Ya Hussain. Brothers, a simple reply all together. La Beka Ya Hussain La Beka Ya Hussain We will remember Karbala We will remember Karbala La Beka Ya Hussain La Beka Ya Hussain La Beka La Beka Ya Hussain 
the resemblance of Nabi. A light so bright all could see, an adhan for history. Akbar fights like a lion, all who face him are beaten. Like Haider has arisen, I'll defeat all enemies. Just one drop of water, please, la beg. Louder, la beka ya Hussein, la beka ya Hussein, A spear deep within his chest, a spear deep within his chest. A burn is his final breath, a father sees his son's death. The nur of your father's eyes, without you there is no light. Like Yaqub, just make me blind. There's no life I want to see without my son next to me, Labeka Yahusain, Labeka Yahusain, Labeka Yahusain, Labeka Yahusain, Labeka Yahusain, Labeka a spear deep within his chest, a spear deep within his chest. A burn is his final breath, a father sees his son's death. The nur of your father's eyes, the nur of your father's eyes. Without you there is no light, like Yaqub just make me blind. There's no life I want to see without my son next to me. La beka ya Hussein. 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 How brave can one young man be? How brave can one young man be? Look at Qasim on his steed, fighting on the battlefield, fending off spears and arrows, the enemy's raining blows, till onto the plains you fall. The horse is trampling you, how will Hussein carry you? La beka ya Hussein. La beka ya Hussein. La beka ya Hussein. How patient can one man be? How patient can one man be? Oh, a boss can't bear to see the children weak and thirsty. Alone he was outnumbered. He lays armless on this earth as it weeps for its self-worth. How I wish to stand by you. How I wish to stand by you. You, flag bearer of the only truth, La Beka Ya Hussein, La Beka Ya Hussein, La Beka Ya Hussein, we fly to you, Hussein. 
We fly to you, Hussein. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein, and always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein, and always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein, and always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein, and always crying your name. Every year we visit you, seeking your proximity. Karbala inspires us, your message and purity. How can we ignore that fateful scene? You are our hope, our heart, our deen. You are our sirat al-mustaqeem. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. Gliding over the Furad, we can see the river flow. We can see that arrow fly, cast the mush that fateful blow. Swooping down to where the water fell. A brother bids his master his farewell. Rukayas cries, Zainab's left to quell. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We can see the day unfold. I quote the prophet's memory. We can hear the cries of pain. We can hear the tragedy. Zainab cries out, where is my Abbas? Rukayas cries, we're dying from the thirst. Still the call Halmin today is us. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always cry your name. Zainab said she saw that day through all the brutality. Nothing but her law's decree. All she saw was his beauty. On these plains, the truth so clear to see. Humility in adversity. Unwavering faith and purity. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always cry your name. We follow the caravan, gliding Kufa to Sham. Helplessness prevails around, cannot hear to bear the sound of enchained children of Ali. Sister of Hassan, best patiently. We lie a user repeatedly. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always cry your name. Oh, Hussein, your sacrifice showed us how we can fly free. Choose a path of righteousness, fight oppression, tyranny. We will always encircle your shrine. Follow your example so divine. Our love for you will not decline. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein. And always crying your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein, and always cry your name. We fly to you, Hussein. We flock to you, Hussein, and always cry your name. Salawatullah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Brother Salah time is in uh, two minutes, inshallah. Please prepare for Salah.
إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن عليا ولي الله أشهد أن عليا حجة الله
أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن علي ولي الله أشهد أن عليا حجة الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي العلا وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله 
Allahu Akbar, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayya, Allahu Akbar. Subhanu Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdih, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad ya latif, irham abdaka al-ba'if al-dhalil. Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عداد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والنجاة من النار ومن كل بلية والفوز بالجنة والرضوان في دار السلام وجوار نبيك محمد عليه وآله السلام اللهم ما بنا من نعمة فمنك لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك
استغفر الله ربي واتوب اليه الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان علي ولي الله اشهد ان عليا حجه الله حي على الصلاح حي على الصلاح حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر الحمد لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي العلا وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر 
سبحان ربي على على وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر في حول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد الله أكبر سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر سبحان ربي العلا وبحمد سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد يا ولي العافية نسألك العافية عافية الدين والدنيا والآخرة الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Brothers and sisters, we will now have a short speech by Huz Hussain. This will be followed by the announcements, Isha Dua, and then Ziyarat. Can please welcome Brother Muhammad Jawad Ghulam Hussain with Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Condolences to you all on the death of um, um, Imam Hussain alayhi salam and the tragic events of Ashura. I was just wanted to give you a quick update on the blood campaign that we're uh, co um, coordinating with. Who is just saying the record-breaking blood campaign in the next? It's just taking place on the 27th of August, which is in less than three weeks. And I came here uh, before you in Ramadan to talk to you about it. And since then, we've had an incredible amount of support from all of you. So salawat, uh, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Wow. So much so that we filled out about 95% 90, of our slots for that day across the UK. It's been a phenomenal effort, so I'd like to thank you all. On the other hand, unfortunately, because of the uh, severe staff shortages with the NHS, uh, we've only managed to secure a, f um, a few centres within London. Um, Edgware and Stanmore not being one of them. So the centres that we have available are West End, Tooting and Luton, which is relatively close to London. So having said that, uh, please feel free to donate before or after the 27th of August. I know you might uh, not be part of that blood world record campaign on the 27th if you have signed up to Edgware, but please feel free to donate before or after because you are donating in the name of Imam Hussein and you are saving um, p three lives at, uh, at least. So inshallah you can all um, come forward. And with your permission, we can ask the NHS to get, get in touch with you for all those who have signed up to Edgware inshallah. Um, you can also still help with this uh, with this effort by uh, going to blood.whoishussein.org and supporting us there. Uh, we're all hoping that, inshallah, this world record puts Imam Hussein in the in the eyes of the media and sort of in the airwaves all over the world, inshallah, because it is a fantastic world record that we're trying to break 50,000 blood donations on a single day. Uh, we also need grassroots support as well, so uh, as well as going to the media, Please, please, please talk to all your friends, your colleagues, your relatives about this campaign uh, and just talk to them about what inspired us to go and donate blood to save lives in the name of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Thank you all for that and uh, salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.
Thank you, Muhammad Jawad. I appreciate it's the end of the program. I'll just quickly run through these few announcements. Please bear with me. Uh, Daily Ladies Morning Majlis will be at 10 a.m. with Quran, and the Children's Muharram program will be in the Annex as well at 10 a.m. parallel to the Ladies programs. The main programs will start at 7.15 p.m. with Quran. Majlis has been arranged for both ladies and gents at Imam Hussein Foundation in Watford, next to Kingsway School. The program starts at 11 p.m. with Quran. Haditha Kisa, Majlis by Sayyid Muhammad Rizvi, Saf Matam, followed by Niaz. The program will continue until Shama Gariba. Please try to car share where possible. The annual Majlis at Woodcock Hill Cemetery during Ashura Day, Tuesday the 9th of August, will begin at 5 p.m. A humble request again for Mu'minin to car share as much as possible and to follow the instructions from the car park volunteers. Muharram Majalis sponsorship scheme is £810 per night to sponsor either in part or full. Please contact Brother Mushtaq Qasim or Brother Sajjad Tijani in the gents or the chair lady Nasima by Karim in the ladies. The Muharram Niyans Fund is also open. Please donate generously at the treasurer's desk and membership subscriptions can also be paid at the desk or online. As you know, we are working towards our future at Hojat Harefield. Please donate at the treasurer's desk in the gents and the ladies or via the Harefield ambassadors tables. Recitation requests can be emailed to recite at hojat.org and a reminder to please respect our neighbours by not blocking their driveways. Car park announcement, once rugby and centre car parks are full, overflow will be in the Mandir rear grass area. Please follow the guidance from the car park volunteers and cooperate with them fully. If you are parking in the Mandir grass area, please ensure you vacate by 10.30 p.m. Kindly refrain from smoking or littering in their grounds. And lastly, as we approach the day of Ashura, we need to make a pledge to the Imam of our time Leaflets will be distributed outside the center containing practical steps for self-improvement. Self the difficulty increases as the stages increase, therefore it's applicable to all ages. Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. اللهم إنه ليس لي علم بموضع رزقي وإنما أطلبه بخطرات تخطر على قلبي فأجل في طلبه البلدان فأنا فيما أنا طالب كالحيران لا أدري أفي سهل هو أم في جبل أم في أرض أم في سماء أم في بر أم في بحر وعلى يدي من ومن قبل من وقد علمت أن علمه عندك وأسبابه بيدك وأنت الذي تقسمه بلطفك وتسببه برحمتك اللهم فصل على محمد وآله وجعل يا رب رزقك لي واسعا ومطلبه سهلا ومأخذه قريبا ولا تعنني بطلب ما لم تقدر لي فيه رزقا فإنك غني عن عذابي وأنا فقير إلى رحمتك فصل على محمد وآله وجد على عبدك بفضلك إنك ذو فضل عظيم السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين وعلى تسعة المعصومين من ذريتك علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة بن الحسن عجل الله لك ما وعدك من النصر وظهور الأمر ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة بن الحسن 
صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا عدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا صلوا على محمد وآل محمد